Welcome to France, chase race number two of the season. Boy, oh boy, we're going to be in for a show here today, and you will not want to miss out on this extravagant action here. On the pole, we have Seth Cole here, and next to him, Charles Samper. Third is Ramian Fisher, your points leader for this event after the great run that he had over in Orlando. Fourth, Jensen Zidell. Fifth, Johnny Gardner. Sixth. Cody Lamas, son, Patrick Smith. Eighth is Emmanuel Hardnett. Ninth, Ace Rodgers, clean the top ten, R.J. Bishop. Here's the rest of your, I don't know why I just did that there. The rest of your starting lineup from 11th on back. I hit the wrong button. Anyways, after some great racing that was going on in Orlando, we mentioned our points leaders. You see through here, 14 drivers are still in the contention, obviously. As on our final row, we have Dylan Throw and Diego Yepes. Apologies, I just had a yawn right there. So looking at the points, how they are. After chase race number one, they are as false a points leader. Ramian Fisher has a seven-point lead over Ember Ross. Now keep in mind, her and Ace Rogers made it in the chase via by the chase LCQ, and Ember Ross made sure she made a statement by that win in Orlando. However, she started toward the rear of the field, and that is not looking good for the pedigree Toyota. In the... Uh, Let's see, that's the 36th position right there, so that's not good for car number 18. We're going to keep it on the paint car here just to make sure we're doing what we're doing here. Uh, a couple drivers need a good run. Uh, Ryan Acosta in that 8 car definitely did not have a good run in Orlando. He crashed out. Jonathan Zorlin, uh, who finished the worst of the Chasers, and the, of course, he is not doing well. The Chasers starting right there. In the 39th position. Uh, RJ Bishop, which you see, has got a good starting spot. It's a good sign right there. Scott Roush, who surprised a lot of people right there after that run he had in Orlando. He started around midfield on the inside line, which is not bad. Or, excuse me, outside line. It's not bad, but however, because this is a right-hander's course, if he stays in that line, he will be A-OK. -okay. Another one to keep an eye on. Ace Rogers, car number 19. He is starting in the um, top 10, which you've seen right there. So that's a good sign for that 19 team. But we're about ready to get the command to fire the engine very, very shortly. We're going to put it on the gun camera angle real quick. 27 laps of action. The cautions will be off because it's a road course. And this is going to be awesome. Our second to last international stop of the season. And let's go down to trackside to get the command. Drivers, start your as there's command to fire engines, as I mentioned, the second to last uh, international stop of the series for the season. Uh, the last one will be over at Pigs Creek, which is over in Canada, which will be chase race number eight. And this is our second to the last road course as well. All the way in France we are at. We debuted this track last season. Now with this porch right here, as you can see, we have to go to the helicopter angle. Then they come across this portion of the course because, well, camera angles are not that good because of the whole spectators here. So, but over here, everything is all good to go. Base car sliding on down to that pit entry right there. We're about ready to turn them loose. 27 laps of action. Who's going to take the victory? About to find out. Green flag is out. We're underway here at Sean Zilizay. Second three, if everyone's all good. Yep, that is a good sign right there. They were four wide at a point, but they settled back out to three. That is a good sign right there. Now, this is very similar to Dubai. However, this is more of a banked course in Dubai. Dubai is a very flat course. This is a banked version of Dubai, I guess you could say. And a battle between Charles Sanford, Ramey, and Fisher. Fisher, so far, starting off the chase like a bank. Top of the Chasers once again, and here he is in P2 trying to hold off Charles Samper for that second position. Samper kind of swung it wide right there with that 22 car, and it's not going to get that position. Nice move on the 22 to prevent it. Alfred Chase spot right there. Johnny Gardner and Patrick Smith, the second highest chaser there.
You see also Ace Rogers trying to get up to the inside as well. Or at least the right side of the 12. Gardner completed the pass. And leading the first lap is Seth Cole in the 55 as a big, crucial lap led for the 55. Now, he will be in the cup chase um, tomorrow. So that good qualifying effort hopefully will continue for the cup series there. As looking through here, John. Oh, Dill throws some side damage to Scott Roush. He's got some damage in the 60. Problems for the Rooster Teeth board of Scott Roush. Who's been consistent this entire season. Finished second in the points in the regular season. And right now is not looking good for that Rooster Teeth board Mustang there. Got some side damage. Same with Dylan Thoreau. You can see Zorlin having major difficulty trying to get around Joshua Sicoli and others. Not a good run for that double zero team as well. You also got Cole Deaver in the rear of the field. Something kind of ways back. Zach Blickinger also in the rear of the field. Adds two is Nathan Stapleton. Wow, three wide for position right there. Not good run for Zach Blickinger, who led the regular season points at the end of the season there. Wow, we got to keep an eye on this right here. There's three wide coming into this portion of the turn, and we'll keep it together. Now, pit stops will play a big factor in this race. It's a matter of who's really going to be able to come out on pit strategy right there. I believe we will have two stops this race. Keep an eye on lap 9 or 10 for the pit sequence to come around when these leaders come around. Eric Burton trying to go, go by Kyle Matthews for position. However, the 11 is going to be on the wrong side of the course right now and Kyle Matthews will take position off of Eric Burton. Now Rowe trying to take advantage of that mishap and of case. Right now Seth Cole trying to run away from Ramian Fisher. He hasn't been really been able to do that. Got around from the rear of the field right now. As Ramian Fisher all over the back bump of the 55 or at least trying to be. Charles Sanford has got other plans in that 0-1 Flex Seals Chevrolet. This portion of the track, they like to have the cars get up to one another toward the bumper and try to make sure that they can make passes from there. And you can see Fisher was trying to do that, but Charles Sanford was able to shut the door quicker on the 22 rather than anyone else. And, oh, Sanford kind of swung that... Turn wide right there. Here comes Zydell. He's trying for third. Not going to be the case. Gardner and Smith were side by side. Now Gardner will still be able to hang on for now. Ace Rogers, the other Chase LTQ driver. Had a really good run in eighth. Had a not bad run over at Orlando. Just didn't get a lot of points, especially not leading the lap right there. R.J. Bishop trying to make sure he holds off Jessica Shelton for position. Still side by side is the 98 and the 20. 20 really giving R.J. a good run for his money right there. We're about ready to go to that portion of the track. RJ really trying to hold on, and he'll be able to once we come off this turn right here, so I'm not too worried. And look at this, up at the front, Fisher. Seth Cole running away. Fisher made a little contact with the 55, and will not make a pass. Zydell starting to lose ground on Charles Sanford, that 21. It's getting reeled in by Johnny Gardner. Now remember, that's not a chase spot, but every position is key. And you wonder when pit stops are going to come around, who's going to really take advantage of it. Is Ace Rogers trying to go underneath Emmanuel Hartnett, but he's on the wrong portion of the course, is the 19 car. You want to be where Hartnett's at, on that right side. Rogers really trying to push in that 19 car, but just you, you can already know Hartnett's going to have a good advantage right there. Shelton got around R.J. Bishop for the 10th position. Oh, Bishop onto that corner panel there and let the 20 on by. So far, we have not had any wrecks take play. 
Doug Shearer, though, down pit road. Well, nothing major, but we did see Scott Roush have damage. And I believe Shearer got some damage in some type of way, but I cannot think of it. Zorlin got some left side damage in the double zero. His day going from bad to worse. Both him and Scott Roush not having good chase days at all. Neither is your previous race winner, Ember Ross. That poor qualified ever really is hurting that 18 car. There's the Flickinger brothers sandwiching Zachary Fitzwater there. Brett Pritchard trying to go around the 44 on the right side of the course and not going to get the pass in time, I don't think. Still curious to know why the 71 went down pit road unless they're doing a way early strategy. Wow, William Brock went way off the course. He slid that turn right there. And he'll hold on to it for now. William Carter and James Qualls. Carter will hang on to that spot right there. Look at Ace Rogers. He wants that position back from Emmanuel Harder, but he's got to really push that 19 car. Fisher still all over the back one for that 55 car. But remember, too, about Ace Rogers. He's the only representative for Sega Heath Motorsports in the Xfinity Series. The Cup Series has got Kyle Keith and Trent Dunham, but you can tell the Dodge has really not been working out for Sega Keith, and Kyle's even mentioned he's ready to go to Chevy at this point. Bishop starting to lose ground on Jessica Shelton. Kyle Keith trying to reel in that 98 car. Rogers made a little contact with the 29 right there. Another bit of contact right there. Trying to get him out of line there. Not the case. And Fisher still trying to get onto that 55. He just can't seem to make a pass. 55's got um, Seth Cole's got a really good car. Wow, Sanford kind of messed up the turn right there and allowed Zidell to really be on that back bumper, the 01. Rowe must have came down pit road, too, because him and Shearer are quite a raise back. And Osborne down pit road. Could there be some potential strategy? I'm not sure, but we'll see what the case is. Jonathan Wong trying to go underneath Philip Parker for position. That's for the 21st spot. Parker got a good run on the high line, hanging off that turn. And we'll shut the door in the 74. Now Seth Cole able to run away and get some gap from the 22. Zidell getting ready to hit that back bumper of the 01. And we're about ready to have green five pit stops very soon. Actually, right now they're going to do it. Johnny Gardner. Look at that. What a bold move by the 7. He's going to try to get a bonus point for leading the lap. Patrick Smith will stay out with him, and Gardner will lead a lap right there. That's a big, crucial bonus point for the 17. Bunch of drivers staying out. Drivers that came down pit road include the leader, Seth Bull, Ramian Fisher, Charles Samper, Justin Zidell, Emmanuel Hardnett, Ace Rogers, R.J. Bishop, Kyle Keith, Kyle Matthews, Eric Burton, Vince Almarego, William Brock, Zach Lickinger, Zachary Fitzwater, Nathan Sableton, and Jonathan Zorlin. But Johnny Gardner, that's a big, crucial bonus point for that 17. They said, let's get the bonus point. That was big. So what about Patrick Smith? Does he stay on another lap just so that way he can get his bonus point, or do you just don't want to risk it and come down pit road? It's probably one of the most consistent drivers we've had in the entire season without a win. Scott Roush could be in the same category, too, but right now he's not having a good run. So Patrick Smith really in that category for doing a good job. A bunch of drivers that stayed out from that initial pit sequence. And now Johnny Gardner coming on down. Smith, anyone staying out? Special chasers. Not one driver staying out. Everyone coming down. Seth Cole way ahead of Ramian Fisher. Charles Samper lost some ground in that 0-1 car. And look who got a good pit stop. 
Hard end at Ace Rogers. Ab Shearer, I believe, is not a lap down. I think he is behind Ace Rogers. I could be entirely wrong, but I don't know for the case. Seth Cole, though, seeing the cars exiting pit road. Are they going to beat out the 55 car? There's Gardner. He's trying to get ahead, and I think it's safe to say that is a definite yes. Seth Cole will retake the lead from everyone else. Gardner, though, going to come right behind Ramey and Fisher in that third slot. So they had a good pit stop right there. It's at 17. And Patrick Smith, trying to get around Justin Seidel, cannot seem to do it. Oh, but Seidel swung the corner right there. It's a good, good run right there. Now, that's, I guess, something you want to do with these cars is to swing the corner. R.J. Bishop, Jessica Schoen bound for position. Charles Sanford trying to gain one of his spots from uh, Kate Anderson in the 42. Oh, I just heard a crash. At least I thought. Oh, yeah, Jeffrey Finn guy's got hood damage. Oh, and it's Cole Deaver in the nine. More troubles for the Liberty Chevrolet. Jonathan Wong with damage. Andres Baranowskis. In our first major crash of the afternoon. Side-by-side -side battle for third. That's Zydell and Gardner. Patrick Smith in the fifth slot. And Zydell will take third from Johnny Gardner. I believe for Zydell, he's looking for his career best finish in that 21 car. Wow, Gardner. Or, or, Gardner. Gardner got very swiggly off the turn right there. But he's used it to an advantage on a side-by-side -side battle for third. They got to get that situated quickly. This is allowing the leaders to run away. Carter still fighting with Zidell for that third spot. Patrick Smith is going to try to hang on for fifth off Emmanuel Hartnett. And Gardner got two battles heading into the uh, final turn there. You can see it from here. And I was right about Kev Shear. That shortstop really helped him out. He went up to eighth. And Gardner going to barely hang on. I don't know if he's going to actually hang on. Smith, though, is going to get the spot of Emmanuel Harder, who really tried to use the pressure on that 29. And Gardner and Zidell still side-by-side -side for third. A two-and-a-half second lead. Zidell will hang on for third. Gardner was ahead of Zidell at the line, but just could not get the advantage off the Reese's Camaro there. Gardner going to try once again. This time he's got some drafting from Patrick Smith in the 12. Now he's going to help Zidell. Now he's going to help Johnny Gardner. And this battle for third is just heating up between a chaser and a non-chaser. But it's allowing another chaser to come into the fray to really try and take advantage of this. If I were Smith, I would help the 7 out. Whoa! Patrick Smith took that turn way wide. Top 2 still unable to run away. Gardner having the preferred line as they head into the final turn here. And we'll complete the, third, the pass for the third position and definitely will take the spot. Smith now trying to take advantage of Zidell's mishap and probably not where you want to be right there. Now it's allowing Emmanuel Hardnett to get onto the back bumper, or at least try to be. Well, the good news for Gardner, he got his third spot back, but now he's got to really fight tooth and nail to get up with the leaders as Anise Rogers once again trying to get around Hardnett. No luck. We'll have to look in a second about what happened uh, to Jeffrey Pingai and others there. 
are really rear in the field. That's Kev Shear. He just made another pit stop. Joshua Sicoli also has damage in that 33 car. A couple cars way in the rear of the field. Brett Pritchard and Chandler Caudill in the Wrangler and Napa Auto Parts there. You can see the skin marks. That's where I kind of assumed that the wreck took place. Because that's the only real trouble spot, I guess you could say, trouble spot. We normally have on this course. Everywhere else, not really a trouble spot. I guess with the exception of the first turn, it really isn't a trouble spot that's on the course. Now, if you notice lap 7, the leaders came down pit road, so if you do the math, they're going to barely make three stops, and not nearly make a fourth stop. So, this will be a crucial time to keep an eye on Seth Cole and Ramian Fisher in the 55 and 22, but I mean, I'll tell you what, Seth Cole's been having a good car in that m ms Chevy Camaro there, but just, he's been able to hold off Ramian Fisher as best as possible, and that 22's and a great qualifying effort, just not enough to where you can get up ahead of that 55 team there. But that is a thankful thing for uh, Johnny Gardner and others, especially the fact that not only Fisher is the points leader, but the fact that Gardner is the only chaser to have a bonus point in this entire race. That is a huge lucky break. Shear just got around. Uh, um, Coley for position. You know, really don't matter as much. It's war trying to go around Joshua Osborne. Keep in mind, he's got damage. He's in the top 20, barely, but he's got a little bit of hood damage there. And no pit stops yet. We're getting near to that point, though, that these drivers will come down the second time. We're heading into that lap, so keep an eye on these two drivers right here, and keep an eye on Johnny Carter if he stays out to try to uh, do what he's been doing. Oh, wow, Smith swung the corner way wide. It's allowing Hartnett to try to take advantage, and, man, I'll tell you what, it's like when cars do that, they're not able, once to try to take advantage of that, they'll take a good advantage on the exit of the turn rather than the entrance. It's like the entrance you could do so well, but the exit, not so much at all. Harder trying to go behind the 12, trying to make a pass, but just going to wait wait it out right now. Well, 70 also knows, too, if Johnny Garner's been able to cut some time on the 55 and 22. But not really a whole lot. It's at least a couple tenths, but you can tell that 7 is really trying to push. Now, between Garner and Fisher is a total of 9 points separating between those two drivers. So Garner isn't too far behind, but, you know. Oh, and look at this! Fisher coming down pit road. Seth Cole's going to stay out. The other driver's taking strategy. Ace Rogers staying out. Wow, a whole bunch of different strategies there. Some drivers who were down the first time are staying out a second time. Trying to make sure they are good to go on gas, they don't want to risk it. So interesting how that strategy really coming into, into play right there. You notice too that Seth Cole was in the same strategy as the 22 and he stayed out an extra lap so I'm curious to know what the M&M Chevrolet's thinking. That's a big, that's a, that's a slap in the face for Gardner there. But even though he led a lap, he already got his bonus point. You don't need to worry about anything else. The same can be said for Ace Rogers and even Patrick Smith. And hell, if you even want to go further, um, you can even say um, Zachary Fitzwater too. So Coley, by the way, is a lap down, keep in mind. And leaders are coming down. Smith is going to stay out, however. He is going to get that bonus point. I think if he can get ahead of the 55, and yes, he will. Patrick Smith, the second chaser, 
This entire race will lead a lap. Just about everyone else coming down. However, some other drivers are staying out. They're doing another lap. This is what's so amazing about this course, because so much different pit strategies can come into play, and really you can just see who really can take advantage of the pit stops there. Oh, wow! Sure, I think that in a hard hit. That was a mistake on the 71's part. Where is the uh, 22? There he is. Gonna get ahead of Seth Cole. He's gonna try. Oh wow, Garner got ahead of Seth Cole there in the pit stop. Fisher gonna try to get ahead of Seth Cole. Can't do it. Oh, he's gonna try though. Here comes Fisher. And we'll get the pass. It took a pit stop at the 22. We'll pass the 55 of Seth Cole. Gardner got ahead of the 55. They went on a different strategy. And now everyone else on down. Patrick Smith. One car also staying out. It's the lap down car. Gosh, was going, but Patrick Smith went an extra lap to stay out. He will lead another lap, but even though one lap is all you need. If no one else staying out. So now Johnny Gardner trying to lead after everything that took place, but wow, Ramey and Fisher probably did not even see that coming. Who's now trying to run away from the 55 and got his hunt's mind on the 7. Now, not officially yet, but when they come at the line, we will have a brand new leader of Johnny Garter. Trying to make chasers 2 for 2 on winning races here in the Xfinity Series. And Smith with a very good pit stop. Will not beat out Patrick Smith, but will beat out Emmanuel Hart and Nathan Saban. Where's Case Rogers? Where's the 19? Oh, he's still on pit road. Problems for Ace Rogers. Oh, he's got damage. Problems for Ace Rogers, the 19. That is a big blow to the 19. I don't know exactly what happened, but something did, and he's out of it. It was as high as in the top 10, having a great run all race long, and that is going to end for the 19 team for Sega Keith. That has got to be frustrating right there. They were looking for such a great run, and something had happened. We'll look at everything at the very end. Oh, wow. Three wide heading to the turn. Look at RJ Bishop taking advantage of that. Went two for one. And just nearly got himself into the top ten. Now confirm the new leader, Johnny Gardner. Wow, Bishop jumped to eighth on that move. I don't know how he made that work, but he damn sure did. That was a move of the race right there. Shearer's got a rear deck lift full of Benjamin Miles and Jessica Schellen behind him. And Fisher got ahead of Garner. Look at the 22. I didn't even see him take the pass. It must have been off turn one. But Fisher, the new leader, and that is a scary sight for the other chasers. Seth Cole, though, the good news for him, or, or the good news for the other chasers, Seth Cole had the most laps, so... I don't think that's too much of a worry, but whatever Fisher did, that 22 team on pit road, they made it work. We're back to the helicopter angle here. Oh, wow, skin marks you just seen into that one portion of the course. That may have explained about Ace Rogers right there. But we're going to have a brand new leader coming off the final turn. And it's going to be Ramey and Fisher... In car number 22, he will get a bonus point. Three chasers have led laps today, and that is big right there. Now the question is, when the final pit stop comes around, who's going to take advantage? And you got to feel for Ace Rogers was having such a great day 
and got involved in an accident, and that really is going to hurt the team right there. Kev Shearer starting to slip back in that 71, now outside of the top 10. It's that Dodge Challenger. They tried short pitting, and to an extent it has worked for that 71 team, but now because they're getting on that uh, burnt rubber, starting to lose effect there. Al Matthews trying to go around William Brock for position. It's for the, or at least trying to hold on for 15th, and will do so. Man, folks, I'm, oh, Ace Rogers back out in the course. Finally, he is one lap down, however. Out of the race after everything taking place, Cole Deaver, Jeffrey Fingai, Andres Baranowskis, jo Jonathan Wong, Ryan Acosta, and James Qualls. What happened to the 70 car? Well, whatever it is, we'll take a look as well, but Fisher will lead that lap right there, and he is putting some distance on Johnny Carter. Wow, at least six tenths he's put on. That 22's got a strong car. I don't even think anyone's going to hit him. Fastest uh, lap so far has been Eric Burr with the 121.009. Almost got the 120 there. And look who's second fastest. That's 22 right there. One twenty one seven two six is last lap. Gardner was way slower than the 22. That 22 is putting some distance. On the 7 in the New Yorkers there. Almost got into one another. Wow. I remember Johnny Gardner and Seth Cole. They're from New York. Both of them are. And they almost turned one another. But this allows the 22 to run away. Wow, that was a risky move right there. Carter coming down pit road. I think that strategy where he pulled off and it's not working to his favor. And I think he's trying to short pit too. I'm not I'm not too entirely sure, but there's a problem on the seven. He is coming down pit road. He will surrender the third position. Well, other drivers coming down pit road. Joshua Osborne, the 27. And Brett Pritchard in the 3. William Flickinger in the 96 is down. Does he have damage? No, he doesn't. I thought he did for a second. Let's go on board one of the drivers for this portion of the race. And uh, once we do that, when we uh, go and cross the stripe, actually, Patrick Smith working on John, uh, that time. Justin Zidell, what am I saying there? And we'll go on board with your leader of the race, Ramian Fisher. Actually, once when we hit to that, that portion of the track, where we're not able to see anyone there. Uh, let's go on board, Ramian Fisher. So as you can tell, it is a very similar course like Dubai. But more of a fake. Oh, well, I shouldn't go on board because we are having pit stops. Seth Cole. He's going to make sure he's going to lead that lap over the 22 of Fisher, and we'll do so. I don't know why I tried to go on board from that. So our money stop is now. And this is where a lot of people are going to be focusing on that 22 cars you're seeing. Looking for PB1 right here as he is in his slaw, uh, stall number one slaw. What am I saying? I cannot speak anymore. Got the right sides on. Now the left sides, they're working on Charles Samper into his pit stall. Ramian Fisher in stall number three. Out and away is the 22 team. What is those Aaron Byrne trying to be outside L? Good stop by the 11, but just not enough. Where is Johnny Gardner? That is a good question to really ask right now. There's the 7. He got ahead of the 21, but not ahead of the 22. 
That may not be good for the chasers. Oh, bud. It's water gonna stay out. He's trying to get that lap led. Is he gonna do it? No, he's not. Seth Cole will lead the lap. Not enough time for the 0 7. Tried, but just not enough. I believe he's one of the few drivers staying out. Alexander Rowe, Diego Yepes. They're staying out. I know they ain't gonna make it. There's no way. There's Sicoli. He's lap down. Ace Rogers is a lap down. There's Fisher. There's Johnny Gardner. And the 55. Well, he's got a good head of start. I, I guess they played strategy because Seth Cole's out of the way. Same for Patrick Smith in the 12. Smith did not want to afford that 22 winning, so he is out ahead. Smith's still looking for his first career Xfinity Series victory. At least for now, he would be the top chaser. He better make sure those tires get warmed up now than never. Otherwise, it is game over for the other chasers. Ross and Shear going around now. Morego for position. Seidel going underneath Kyle Keith for position right there. Fisher, he may have to deal with Ace Rogers. I'm not too sure. But Seth Cole, who's had a great car this entire race race day right there. Oh, another car coming down pit road. It's Ace Rogers. That scared me for a second. So, the good news for Fisher, you don't have to deal with lap traffic. That is a good sign right there. Look at Zydell trying to work on Jessica Shelter position. It's water on down. Rowe is going to lead the lap over the 07. And Zydell gets the pass on the 20. Wow, Gardner's had nothing for that 22 car at all. Patrick Smith, Fisher's teammate, running away. But whatever strategy that 12 car did, that was a huge lucky break. I think they dodged a big bullet. How about Fitzwater? Still having a good run that 0-7, trying to stay within that 11th position there. Or, or at least the top 10, give or take. A couple laps to go there. We're going to go on board with 55 up Seth Cole right about now. So take a look from the view of that 55 Pirates of the Caribbean M&M Chevrolet. Now this course is, like I said, very similar to Dubai, but it's had its banked. So you can see the difference in slopes going up and down the course. And Seth Cole, you will see, is now the new leader. Now it is very similar like this here, like Dubai, very flat. But except the only difference is there's uh, terrain on the side of the course compared to uh, Dubai where there's no terrain. It's just basically all asphalt. And this is the part where it's really different. There's banked elements right here. This is all banked right here. Then as you see, you're going to head on down into this portion of the course. Where in Dubai, it's very flat. It's like a U-E turn type of thing. Where this one here, it's very curved. And then it strains out over here and then turns again. Then this is one of the few upward slopes of the course. Going on up into a small little S turn there. And then this is a very big right-hander course right here. This is where also you can make a lot of passes if you are able to, give or take. Then as they complete that, there's the spectator angle on the right side and the left. Going up one more time before eventually getting the flat portion of the track again and working going downhill. And then there is your complete lap around Sean's Lise. Patrick Smith, I'll tell you what, that 12 guard's trying to reel in that 55. But time is ticking for that 12 team. They did cut some time by four tenths. Nearly three, but is it enough? 
And of course, with the 12, I think you may want to worry about the other car behind. Ramey and Fisher has got a strong car in that discount tire Ford. He is coming for that 12 car. Let alone Seth Cole, too. Carter looks like he will be safe in that fourth spot right there. Third highest of the chasers. One last look through the field. Some guys are pretty spread out through the course. Vince Almorego's got some right side damage in that 80 car. Still got a feel for Ace Rogers, though. That, that was a tough blow for him right there. Well, Patrick Smith, the time is ticking. You want to really cut down. And for Seth Pohl, I'm getting a little worried because you're reeling in that 33. Southern Company, Joshua Sicoli, and he may play a factor. White flag will be coming the line this time by for Seth Cole. Can he hold off Patrick Smith and Ramian Fisher as Fisher has closed the door on the 12? Seth's got to hope and pray that 33 does not look age the field or do what he can to block. White flag for Seth Cole. It looks like we're going to have a good finish. I can tell you what. We're, we're going to look like we're having a good finish. Sicoli. Still playing a factor of him being a lap down damage car. And he's going to hold up the 55. Here comes Patrick Smith. Seth now to the outside of the 33. Oh, look at this. Sicoli's not getting him any slack. Here comes Smith. Wow. What is Sicoli doing? Oh, he's giving a block again. Patrick Smith trying to take advantage. But he's on the wrong side. Now he goes to the right side. He's all over the bumper of the 55. Look at Fisher. Three wide. Three wide to the inside goes the 22. Smith made a rookie mistake. Fisher now the top chaser. Fisher may have a shot to win. He's got a dive bomb at though. He's going to get a shot. Cole trying to hold him off. Coming in the final turn. Going to shut the door in the 22. Not going to be enough. Seth Cole's going to deny the chaser opportunity. He's going to win it, Shanzi Lise. Wow. Barely held on. And Patrick Smith, who looked like he was going to get second place, but Fisher took advantage of the chase opportunity there. And Fisher, once again, top chaser, is going to get a bonus point for leading a lap. That is big right there. However, thanks to Seth Cole in the 55, he will deny the chaser most laps led right there. Because it works for the entirety of the race. Not for the chasers, but the entirety of the race. So Fisher... Smith and Gardner will be happy with the one bonus point they got. But Seth Cole, wow, what a race. Here's your top ten results here at Sean's Lise. Seth Cole, Ramian Fisher, Patrick Smith, Johnny Gardner, Justin Zidell, his best career finish right there in fifth. Jessica Shelton, Kyle Keeves, Zachary Fitzwater with a, a little bit of a damaged car that he's had will come away eighth. Ninth, Nathan Stapleton, what a great rebound for that 88 team. But... As you can tell, Fisher, the top chaser, that really doesn't help that as much. And Kate Anderson will complete the top ten. So before we check out any replays, here's the rest of your finishing results. So we can see some of the guys right there. Let's go take a look over ourselves some of the crashes that took place as they are now official in the books. Well, this was about a third of the of the race in. Keep an eye on Andres Baranowskis, Connor Meyer, and Zach Flickinger. Baranowskis trying to... Go to the inside of the 51, 51 not cutting her some slack, and then Zach Flickinger just sneaks in there, is the 44, and then around goes the two, Connor Meyer just about avoids hitting the wall, same for Zach Flickinger, now the problem, two slide right in front of the field, of that portion of the field, on a banked little slope right there, and you can tell that two cars trying to hang on for dear life and hope no one hits her. Now, she's going to get the car refired up, turns it around. Chandler Cotto barely going to miss that one, but Jonathan Wong cannot see through the smoke. Trying to avoid that two car, nowhere to go, right into the Baranowski's right there. And there is Jeffrey Finn guy in the 92. And keep an eye on Cole D for that nine car. 
Nowhere to go for him. Right into Jonathan Wong. There's where Joshua Sicoli gets his piece. They're going to get involved right there. And I think this is also going to explain, I think, Scott Rauch. I'm not 100% positive, but... Okay, never mind. I think I got involved. It's about sideswipe the nine too. So that's that portion of the crash. See what happened to um, James Qualls in the seventy. That's another one to look at. Well, as you see, they're going to come off the final turn right there, and these guys carried a lot of momentum. We'll also, look what happened to Osborne too in just a bit. And the eighty-eight was all over the corner panel of that seventy car. Oh, Ryan Acosta crashed up ahead. What happened to the 8 car? Let's take a look at that in a bit. Qual's also trying to avoid Ryan Acosta. Hitting the brake, just about. What's going to happen to Ryan? I'm actually curious to know what happened to the Order Chevrolet. I didn't even see the 8 car go around at all. Oh, wow. He was in the top 10 at the time, battling with Benjamin Miles. And that's just about the same thing that happened, except Acosta actually hit the wall. And around goes the eight. That's a chaser I did not even know that had damage. There you see James Qualls right there in the 70. Look at him squirming around trying to avoid that crash. Smartly using the brakes just to avoid that eight car. I believe that's what happens to him. Now, I'm curious to know from here, we know Ace Rogers retired out of the race in the 19. Let's just see what happened if we're able to. Wasn't here. It's got to be within that final portion of the track. I'm Here's to know that. You see, he's already got damage. He's all good here. Well, he's kind of good. Coming off pit road here. What happened to the 19? Oh, oh, there it was. Manuel Hardnett. Wow, and that was a battle for the sixth position. Re remember, Rogers and Hardnett were battling just about the entire portion of the race. And Hardnett, once the 19 got around him, keep in mind the 19 is a chaser. And Harden is going to do some dirty deed right there. And he's going to take out the competition. And Rodgers, got to be living about that one. There you see, sends him to the wall. And then Harden says, all right, I'm going to dump you. Takes a hit on the passenger side wall right there and then as you can see, the, the 19 trying to get... Oh, oh wow. That explains a lot, too. He had a problem where he could... Like, something broke at a point. Keep an eye on the 19. Look, he, he tried to go. And then, I, I don't know what happened to the car. Like, something broke. He couldn't get it fired up. So he tried to turn it around. Keep in mind, there's oncoming traffic. And then, wow. Something broke on the 19 car. And then they got, they had to work on it on Pitt Road. Couldn't go forward. I think the throttle may have gotten uh, some, something wrong with the throttle. Wow, that, I have never seen that before. That is a first. It's going to explain about what happened to Joshua Osborne with this damage. But you see, because this is a very tight corner. Everyone had a brake check right here, and then Scott Roush went around in the 60. Keep an eye on that white 27 car you're going to see coming right there, that Castle GTX car. Kev Shear goes into the 60, 
Osborne trying to sneak around, and it did not work out. That's where the 27 got his damage, and both the cars from uh, Roush Fingai Racing having major troubles today. But that is basically the entirety of the crash. Let's take a look, actually, from our last lap thing, the 22 of Ramey and Fisher. Let's, let's actually have a look at that entirely as we're here. As Seth Gold really dodged bullet, as well as half the other chasers. We got to take a look at this move right here. Now, remember, the 33 is um, lap down. He's damaged. Now, the 12, I don't know why he went to the high line, because I, well, let's actually go back quite a ways a little more here. Now, look at here. Now, the 55's having trouble trying to get around the 33. Now, remember, this is a right-hander's course. Smith's a rookie. Fisher's a veteran. Now, see, Cole went to the left side because that was the way you want to go. Well, the 12 thought that'd be a good idea, too, but then look what's coming up. Right-hander's course. Fisher seen that. He took the advantage. And once he got a nose in there, you knew that was all she wrote right there. And that was a great move by the veteran. If he had what, probably one more lap, Fisher would have probably battled Cole for the lead and probably could have won the race. That could have been me, but you know what? That's what I think about it there. So that's a look at what happened with that portion. As you can see, the pace car here and your full finishing results here. One last time, congratulations to Seth Cole on the victory here at Sean's Elyse. Till then, this is your boy, 8675309858, signing off here from France here in the Xfinity Series. We will see you for the Cup race tomorrow. Till then, goodbye, everybody.